Fun fact, did you know that Fujitora has only ever had two regrets as a result of blinding himself? The first is not being able to see the face of the future pirate king, Monkey D. Luffy, and the second is not being able to see the subscribe button for the Grand Line review, meaning that Fujitora cannot press it to receive regular One Piece content uploaded straight into his YouTube feed. Poor, poor guy. All you viewers out there don't know how good you have it. This is an issue of the Marine's trust and dignity. If your face is all you care about, then keep it tucked away where it won't get hurt. And if admitting fault means that your trust is gone, well then you never had any in the first place. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. And today we are going to be diving into one of our post time skip marine admirals and resident blind swordsman, Fujitora. Fujitora is a giant of the man, as are all of the established marine admirals, who commands a very solid aesthetic in regards to wearing light purple and was first introduced into the series during the Dressrosa arc. He has the most immediate distinction of being the only marine admiral who is blind, as well as the only cannon admiral to wield a weapon, being a Shiko Mizue. And Fujitora does also have quite a compelling reason for why he is blind though. And as you may notice by the rather poignant scars on his face, this is not a natural feature. He was not born blind, nor did he lose his sight due to some sort of medical condition. No, rather Fujitora's blindness was self-inflicted, which he did in response to his pure disgust at the corruption and evil that he had viewed within the world. I'm not exactly sure what it is he saw, but we're talking some pretty horrid stuff. But strangely enough, with this in mind, Fujitora made the decision to join the Marines, which is, you know, an intriguing move as it is arguably the most corrupt organization within the One Piece world. But also very interestingly, this decision occurred during the two year time skip in what was known as the World Military Draft. With Fujitora seemingly almost immediately rising to the rank of Admiral, which is where the name Fujitora comes from actually. It's his epithet, meaning Wisteria Tiger. And meanwhile, his real name is Isho. But we're going to continue referring to him as Fujitora because that is what the large majority of the fan base will know him as. But despite joining the Marines and effectively becoming something of a lackey of the world government, Fujitora has maintained a strong sense of morality within his role in the organization. A feature that most admirals are not particularly portrayed to have, but Kuzan that is. But even then, Kuzan engaged in some very, very questionable behavior. Meanwhile, Fujitora will generally act in a reasonable manner, prioritizing the greater good of the world, but not at any expense like former Admiral Sakazuki. In this way, Fujitora has developed his own brand of justice, which is the motto of virtuous justice. And as a result, he has found some natural allies within the Marines, one of which is Vice Admiral Smoker, with whom Fujitora seems to have developed a sort of strong bond with. As Smoker has even shared with him the truth behind the events of Alabasta regarding the Straw Hats and former Warlord of the Sea, Sir Crocodile. Now, speaking of Warlords of the Sea though, this is probably Fujitora's strongest ideological platform in the series, as he has thus far operated gunning towards the clear goal of abolishing the seven Warlords of the Sea, believing them to be an example of the epitome of corruption and pirates that cannot be trusted under any circumstances. And to be fair look with everything we've experienced in regards to the warlords who generally work directly against the interests of the world government, let alone the greater good of the world, Fujitora does have quite a bit of a good point here, and one that would become very clear during the Dress Rosa arc in which Fujitora would play a major role. In fact, he was first introduced to us not as a powerful marine admiral, but as a naive blind gambler who was constantly losing money until a certain Monkey D. Luffy called out the fact that the men in charge of the games were cheating, which eventually led to Fujitora using his ability to crush the thugs in a big old hole in the ground, and more on that in a second. But for now, it's important to note that Fujitora refused to reveal his identity to Luffy, stating that it would not be in the best interest of either of them. And this was because the entire reason why Fujitora had been dispatched to Dressrosa was in order to deal with the newly formed alliance of Luffy and Trafalgar Law, who were targeting the current king of the nation and also current warlord of the sea, Don Quixote do Flamingo. And right there, you might recognize Fujitora's trigger word being warlord. But despite this, Fujitora went on to assist Doflamingo as ordered for quite some time, which included a two-on-one battle against Trafalgar Law on Green Bit, where Fujitora's insane abilities were put on full display. Now, Fujitora happens to be a devil fruit user of a particularly scary paramecia type fruit known as the Zushi Zushi no Mi, which allows him to manipulate gravity around select areas. And before we move on, the name of this fruit was revealed in the One Piece Vivia card data book, but within the context of the series itself, the name has yet to be stated, as well as the fact that Fujitora is its user. And I take the time to point that out because there were a bunch of theories floating around on the internet that Fujitora's sword was the actual source of the power, but that is not the case. Fujitora is the user. With that said, Fujitora does invoke the Shikumizuwe to make use of his Devil Fruit abilities, which is very interesting. And the combination of his swordsmanship with gravitational manipulation assumedly increases the potency of his powers, or at the very least adds far more utility to them. And a great example of this is Fujitora sending a force of gravity up into space via his blade and pulling a meteorite back down to earth, targeting whoever his very unfortunate opponent just so happens to be. And that's an example of an extreme use by Fujitora, but with the power of gravity at his disposal, he can perform actions 
actions such as floating and propelling an entire marine battleship, and even more simple invocations such as exerting enough force to immobilize any particular individual. In addition to this, Fujitora is also a master of both observation and armament haki, although he is a particularly unique user of the former brand, as he effectively uses observation haki as a substitute for his missing sight. In fact, with full reliance on this ability, Fujitora has become one of the most powerful observation haki users within the series, and is now capable of using it to sense the emotions and true thoughts of other people, which is a whole new level of mind reedy craziness. In any case, his Devil Fruit combined with incredible use of Haki morphs Fujitora into an absurdly formidable power. And alongside Doflamingo, he was easily able to subdue Trafalgar Law, as well as go on to repel an attack from Straw Hat Swordsman, Roro Noa Zoro. And with all of that said, you might think that Fujitora and Doflamingo were bestest friends forever at this point, but Fujitora did eventually take the time to tell Doflamingo not to mistake him for an ally, and that his actions were being conducted primarily to ensure the safety of the civilians of Dressrosa, who would be put in great danger should an all-out battle occur between the Donkey Quixote and Straw Hat Pirates. And then Fujitora even went on to very boldly state his eventual goal of getting rid of the Warlord system, including the position held by Doflamingo, which prompted an equally if not more bold move from Doflamingo, who attacked Fujitora, although the skirmish wouldn't lead anywhere due to Fujitora's aforementioned concerns. Despite his best efforts though, Dress Rosa would indeed become a battleground, as the Straw Hats with Trafalgar Law and a whole host of other forces launched an all-out attack aimed at defeating Doflamingo, at which point Fujitora's main concern became about damage control. However, for much of the conflict, he he would end up facing off against Sabo of the Revolutionary Army, who had recently acquired the Merimera no Mi, a Logia type fruit previously held by infamous criminal and brother of Luffy, Port Gas D Ace. And Sabo's intrusion here prevented Fujitora from targeting the Straw Hats initially. However, after their battle ended in something of a stalemate and becoming trapped in Doflamingo's birdcage technique, Fujitora decided to invoke his love of gambling and bet on the victory of Monkey D. Luffy, which in this current situation would be the best possible outcome. However, Fujitora did not directly aid Luffy in this effort, instead focused Focusing himself on saving as many civilians as possible and using his power to briefly slow down the birdcage, after which point Luffy was able to deliver the final blow and defeat Doflamingo. And in the epilogue of these events, Fujitora would put his virtuous justice on full display by apologizing to the rightful King of Dressrosa for the world government's neglect in allowing a figure such as Doflamingo to abuse his warlord status and cause the nation of Dressrosa so much pain, as well as humbly stating that after allowing Doflamingo to do as he pleased during these events, that he himself had absolutely no right to preach to anybody on the subject of justice. It would also be Fujitora who initially allowed the truth of what happened on Dressrosa to spread throughout the world, an action for which Fleet Admiral Sakazuki scolded him for, resulting in Fujitora getting into a rather heated argument with the figure whom he is diametrically opposed to, stating that if the credibility of the world government and the Marines could be so easily damaged by this incident, then it meant that the organization never had any in the first place, thus effectively achieving through words what Whitebeard was able to achieve through violence at Marineford and become one of the rare individuals in the series to shut down Sakazuki and put him in his place. But in the process, Fujitora was forbidden from returning to any marine base without the heads of both Luffy and Trafalgar Law, in order to make amends for his actions, or more accurately, strategic inaction on the island. And eventually, Fujitora, thanks to rolling some dice, would make the decision to pursue Luffy, leading to a direct conflict with the Straw Hat Pirate Captain, in which Luffy announced all of his attacks, believing that it would be unfair for him to partake in combat with a blind man without doing so. To which Fujitora responded with what can only be described as this. But in the end, Luffy would be saved by a rush of citizens from Dressrosa, pretending to chase him off, but in reality putting themselves in harm's way to prevent Fujitora from attacking. And Fujitora was able to use his observation haki to see through the charade, hearing the true thoughts of the citizens, and actually coming to develop a profound level of respect and admiration for Luffy. And for the first time in his life, Fujitora began to regret the decision to blind himself, lamenting the fact that he was not able to see Luffy's face with his own eyes. But after letting Luffy and his allies escape, Fujitora was charged with escorting Doflamingo to prison, along with former Fleet Admiral Sengoku and Vice Admiral Suru, a convoy that would come under attack from Jack the Drought, the top officer of one of the four emperors of the sea, Kaido. Although Fujitora and his posse were able to convincingly defeat Jack, however, it did come at a great cost to their fleet. Still, unable to return to any marine base, Fujitora would next appear during the Breviary arc on the holy land of Marijuwa, in conversation with fellow Admiral Ryokugyu, and went on to reveal that Dr. Vegapunk had a new invention that would remove the need for the Warlords of the Sea, and was even involving himself politically to achieve this goal by arranging a meeting with both King Riku and King Cobra, both monarchs who would suffer directly as a result of the Warlord system. And this is where I'm going to have to put up a brief spoiler warning for the events of the interlude between Acts 2 and 3 of Wano. If you're an anime-only watcher and aren't keen on some massive information, then please do skip to this point in the video. I promise I won't be long, super, super quick. But for everyone else, here we go. 
During the reverie itself, Fujitora and Ryukugyu would fight directly against a revolutionary faction, including Sabo. And whilst the direct outcome of this battle has not yet been stated, Fujitora did later appear on another mission, wounded but in good shape, and discussing the terrifying alliance between the Emperor's Big Mom and Kaido. But in more relevant news by this stage, it had become clear that Fujitora was successful in his lobbying quest, as the world government had officially dissolved the organization formerly known as the Seven Warlords of the Sea. Some more fun facts about Fujitora. Aside from Ryukugyu, who still remains unknown, Fujitora is thus far the only admiral to possess a Paramecia-type devil fruit, as all of the others we've explored in the series have been Logia users. In the sixth One Piece character popularity poll, Fujitora ranked in 53rd place, which might seem pretty awful initially, but it does technically make him the most popular current Marine Admiral, which doesn't say great things regarding the love for either Kizaru or Ryukugyu. Fujitora's role in the story has been subject to a fair few odd changes in the anime, one of which being that in his initial appearance, he won 15 times in his game of blind roulette before losing, with many other thugs betting on his calls in order to make money. Whereas in the manga, he is only shown losing. And if I had to provide an explanation for this, I'd say it was so the anime could conjure some filler material with a few extra games of roulette. Furthermore, in a very cute moment of filler, Fujitora at one stage uses the powers of the Zushi Zushi no Mi to retrieve a lost balloon for a young girl, which is just delightful. That's the sort of filler that we like. Fujitora, as with all canon admirals, takes his design directly from a famed Japanese actor, in this case being Shintaro Katsu. And Fujitora is directly inspired by his Atoichi character, a blind swordsman with a love of gambling. And finally, a truly useless fact, when asked by a fan why Oda didn't simply name Fujitora Purple Tiger, which would have been Murasaki Tora or Shitora, Oda said he landed on Wisteria Tiger or Fujitora simply because it sounded slightly cooler. But that pretty much does it for Fujitora. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but applied to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenanigans takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured on the next One Piece. 101.